Solving a system of equations using elimination. This video will help you review the three possible cases we encounter when we're solving a system of equations and solve a system of equations using elimination. So just as a quick review, here are the three possible cases we're going to encounter when we're solving a system of equations that has two equations in it. So the first and most common is one solution. And this occurs when we have two equations that cross in one spot. And that location, the point there at the center of that, satisfies both equations and therefore is a solution to both equations simultaneously. And we end up with one solution. Next case scenario is no solution. This only occurs if the two lines or the two equations that we're looking at create parallel lines. Parallel lines will never cross, therefore these two lines will never have a point in common and there's no solution. Third and final case, infinite solutions. This occurs when we have basically the same equation twice. So when we graph one equation right on top of the other, notice they'll have all kinds of points in common and all of those points will end up being a solution to the equation. Now let's take a look at an example that will help you understand how to solve a system of equations using elimination. So here's what we want to do when we're solving a system of equations using elimination. We want either our x variables here or our y variables here to be exact opposites of one another. If we can create them or manipulate things a little bit so that they end up being exact opposites, when we go to add these two equations together, those variables will drop out and allow us to solve the equation. Let me show you what that looks like. So I'm looking here and I can choose either ones, either the x variables here or the y variables to eliminate and in certain cases it's going to be easier to eliminate one over the other. I think in this case it's probably going to be easiest to eliminate the y variables. I'm choosing that because this is a positive y, this is a negative 2y. It would be pretty easy for me to take this positive y and turn it into a 2y. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to multiply this whole equation, both sides of this equation, by 2. Remember, I'm allowed to multiply both sides of an equation by any number and it won't change the uh, equality that's happening in the equation. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply every term in this equation by 2. So let's see what that looks like. So that would be 6x plus 2y equals negative 22. Let's get that 22 in there. Now this other equation down here, I'm not going to change that at all because if I leave it as it is right now, I have now exact opposites here, a positive 2y and a negative 2y. I'm going to add these equations together. And I can do that because this side of the equation, 6x minus 2y, is equal to negative 2. These two sides are equal. I'm allowed to add equal quantities on both sides of this equation up here. So I'm going to do that. So let's see, 6x plus 6x is going to give me 12x. 2y plus negative 2y is going to give me 0. And this is why this, is, this process is called the elimination method, because I'm essentially eliminating my y variables here. Over here on the right side, I'm going to have negative 22 plus negative 2. That's going to give me negative 24. Now you can see it's a simple one step to solve this equation for x. Divide both sides by 12, and I see that x equals negative 2. Now I'm halfway done. I found one of my variables. I need to find the other variable. So we can substitute now this x equals negative 2 back into either equation. So let's see. Uh, I guess I'll plug this back into this equation here and see what we get. Come down here to take a look at that answer. So I'm going to have 6 times negative 2, because that was my x value, minus 2y equals negative 2. Let's see, negative 12 minus 2y equals negative 2. Add 12. Negative 2y is equal to 10. Divide both sides by negative 2. And you'll see then that I get y is equal to negative 5. So there are my two solutions. Um, oftentimes we'll go ahead and write those solutions as an ordered pair. Go ahead now and pause your video player and answer this practice question. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Let's also do this. Let's eliminate the y variables so that we're both doing the equation the same way. So go ahead and eliminate the y's here. Set yourself up to eliminate those as you do this problem. All right, let's take a look. I currently have a positive y up here and a negative 3y down there. I want them to be exact opposites. So if I multiply this top equation by 3, I'll have a 3y up here and a negative 3y. 
and I'll be ready to eliminate the y variables here. So I'm taking this top equation, and I'm going to multiply by positive 3 each term. So let's see, that's going to be 12x plus 3y equals negative 39. Now I'm going to add that to this equation down here as it stands. So 6x minus 3y equals negative 15. Adding these together. 6x, uh, sorry, 12x plus 6x is going to give me 18x. 3y plus negative 3y is going to give me 0, so my y's are essentially eliminated here. And then over here on this side, uh, let's see, 44, so negative 54. Divide both sides by 18. And we'll see that x then, let's see, 18. It's amazing how that calculator always disappears when I go to do my video, right? All right, so negative 54 divided by 18 is going to give us negative 3. Halfway done. Let's substitute that back into either of these two equations. Um, again, I'll just pick the bottom one. Let's take a look down here. So I'll have 6 times negative 3 minus 3y equals negative 15. So that's going to give me negative 18. I'll add 18 to both sides. Uh, negative 3y equals 3. Looks like y is going to be negative 1. Go ahead and write that as an ordered pair. Negative 3, comma, negative 1 for my solution. Let's go ahead and pause your video player and answer practice question 3. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Okay, so practice problem 3 here. I'm looking and I'm deciding which of these variables, either x variables I want to eliminate or y variables I want to eliminate. The x's are going to be a lot easier here to get rid of because, see, they're, they'll be easy. All i got to do is multiply this top one by 2, and they'll be exact opposites. To multiply, to get 3y and 8y, their least common multiple is 24. So I'd have to multiply both equations times some number um, to get that. So that's going to be a harder route. It'll work, but that's a harder way to do it. I think just going to get rid of the x variables here, and I can do that simply by multiplying this top equation by 2. So let's see, that'll be negative 2x plus 6y equals 20. Bottom equation, 2x plus 8y equals negative 6. Equals negative 6. So then I'll go ahead and add these together. My x's are going to drop out for me, and I'm left with 14y is equal to 14. So I get y equals 1. I'll substitute that back up into this equation for y. So let's see. And then I have 2x plus 8 times 1 is equal to negative 6. 2x plus 8 is equal to negative 6. Subtract 8 from each side. And then divide by 2. We'll get x is negative 7. So writing that as an ordered pair, negative 7, 1. Okay, go ahead and pause your video player now and answer this last practice problem. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. All right, taking a look here, um, getting rid of the x variables is pretty easy. I would just multiply this top equation by 3. We could also get rid of the y variables pretty easy. And again, it would just be multiplying this top equation by 3. So either way I want to do this, I'm going to go ahead multiply this top equation by 3. Distribute it across there so I'd have negative 3x plus 15y equals negative 3. Bring this equation over in the bottom. I'll have 3x minus 15y equals 3. So I'm going to go ahead and add these together. Let's see, uh, negative 3x, positive 3x, that's going to give me 0. Uh, and something weird is happening here positive 15 and negative 15 y is also going to give me 0. So I'm left with this statement here. 0 on the left side is equal to, now on the right side here, negative 3 plus 3 is also 0. So notice the variables have dropped out and I'm left with a true statement. Well, in two equations, in a system of equations, this is the same scenario as we had when in one equation. If the variables drop out and we have a true statement here, 
That means this is going to be infinite solutions. So what we have here is both of these equations are the same thing. Notice this equation, negative, positive, positive, negative, negative, positive. If I take this top equation here, just kind of looking at this a little bit, and I multiplied it by negative 1, this is what, what I would get. You know, multiply by negative 1 and distribute, I would get this. 3x minus 15y equals 3. Notice that equation and that equation are the same. So these equations were exactly the same equa this exactly the same one. So if we graphed them, one line would be right on top of the other and they would share infinitely many points. So anytime you're going to solve a system of equations, everything drops out and we're left with a true statement. You know that's a case where we have infinite solutions. Had all the variables dropped out and we were left with an untrue statement like something like this, 0 equals negative 5, then we would know that these are parallel lines and they have no solution. So very similar case, if we have a true statement infinite, if we have a false statement, we would have no solution.